Now we go on to our next speaker, who is Dr. Sara Pauling, a technical officer in the AMR division of WHO. Dr. Pauling focuses on supporting countries in developing and sustainably implementing national action plans on AMR, which, which are so very important, I think. So over to you, Dr. Pauling. Thank you very much. And, and thank you also for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And I, I think this is a fantastic initiative that is being taken. Can I just confirm that you can see my slides in presentation mode? Yes, not in presentation mode. We, we can uh, see your screen. Your screen okay. is okay. Yes, now you, now you see them. Fantastic. Okay, wonderful. Um, my name is Sarah Pollan, and I work in the National Action Plan and Monitoring and Evaluation Unit here in WHO headquarters. And I'm going to try and provide you with a bit of information on national action plans to combat antimicrobial resistance and the progress over the last five years. As many of you probably know, national action plans um, for AMR, they lay the foundation for comprehensive support and action at country level against AMR. So let's see if I can move my slide. And apologies if some of this is repetitive, but I often think that some of the key messages, we need to repeat them more than once, as that's how we raise awareness and also hopefully eventually drive behavior change. So as we know, antimicrobial resistance is a, it's actually a natural phenomenon that occurs naturally. However, there are drivers, as we've already heard from previous speakers, across the different sectors that accelerate the emergence and spread of antimicrobial resistance. And the two main drivers are the misuse and abuse of antimicrobials in the human health sector and in the animal health sector, as has already been alluded to. And then as Leanne mentioned, really the key message is that we need to preserve our antimicrobials to take them only when and as prescribed and also to finish the course that we have been given. And so given that there are so many different drivers in antimicrobial resistance, as also was presented by Dr. Haile and also Dr. Liz, is that the action at country level has to be multi-sectoral and it has to be coordinated across the different sectors and within the various departments. As Leanne mentioned in her presentation, in 2015, the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance was endorsed by all member states that laid the foundation and was also the blueprint for action at country level when developing national action plans. The five strategic objectives are comprehensive in nature, given that the actions at country level are complex and cut across different thematic areas and also different sectors. And as we are here today, one of the, the first um, objective is of course, improving awareness and understanding. It is where everything starts in our drive to change and combat antimicrobial resistance. The second strategic objective is to strengthen the knowledge and evidence base through surveillance and research. Of course, we need data to inform policy action and to prioritize action at the ground to ensure that we really are addressing the key challenges that each country and district faces, which are often the same, but also different. Thirdly is to reduce the incidence of infection through effective sanitation, hygiene, and infection prevention measures. Fourthly, to optimize the use of antimicrobial medicines. This has already been mentioned many times. And finally, also to develop the economic case for sustainable investment and importantly, also to increase investment into new medicines, diagnostic tools, vaccines, and other interventions that we can continue to treat and prevent antimicrobial resistance infections. And so what countries then did was they basically committed to developing national action plans in 2015. And we as the tripartite have been monitoring the progress at country level since 2017 through what is called the Tripartite AMR Country Self-Assessment Survey. And we're very happy to say that this year, we had the highest percentage of countries participating since the start of the survey, which is 84% of our member states. That is 163 countries. So we're very, very grateful that this also shows that there is increased political attention at the country level as well to AMR. And I would invite everyone here, you can see the link at the bottom of my slide, you can go into the website and filter through the progress 
by region at a global level, but also importantly, by the country that potentially you are coming from. What the survey does, and it is a, it's a self-assessment survey at country level, it poses questions across the different strategic objectives of the Global Action Plan, and then analyzes the responses through a levels of A to E, where if you have indicated that within a certain indicator, you are at level C, that really is our threshold for nationwide implementation. And of course, we want countries to come to C, but also move beyond for sustainable implementation. Of course, we, we cannot complete this presentation without talking about COVID-19. And this year in TREX, we did ask the question on whether COVID-19 has impacted national action plans on AMR. And out of 163 countries, 151 countries did say that COVID has impacted national action plan development and implementation. 134 countries have said that it impacted governance and administrative impacts. For example, as we have heard also from Liz Taylor, the multi-sectoral coordination governance mechanisms, which are so vital for comprehensive coordination at national level, may not have met because perhaps individuals were pulled into the COVID-19 response. And also 128 countries had operational impacts that certain activities that were planned did not go ahead because COVID-19 again probably took over and repurposed the workforce. And so national action plans in total of the corresponding of the countries that reported this year, we're happy to see that 140 countries now have a national action plan. And you will see on this slide on the right, the progress of the five years. Um, and we have seen a significant increase in countries developing and implementing their national action plans, which is a fantastic. And often these national action plans are either the development is started or they are launched during WA. So again, there's a great opportunity during WA to bring political attention to AMR. This was already presented, but it, I think we can always repeat, is that given AMI is a multi-sectoral and one health issue, multi-sectoral governance and coordination is key. And this is often brought about by functioning multi-sectoral working groups within countries. And here again, you can see in the progress that there has been an increase in countries reporting that they have a multi-sectoral coordinating committee or a multi-sectoral working group. However, the vast majority, and here you can see they are in, in the B stage, 42% of these countries actually mention that their working groups are not yet functional. So we still have a far way to go. I will now focus on the human health sector and just briefly provide a few additional information that I thought you may be interested in. When we look at the Global Action Plan Objective 1 on raising awareness on AMR and why we are all here and excited for the next few days, is uh, on raising awareness. And the progress that we have actually seen at country level is that unfortunately still, the vast majority of countries only report that they have limited small scale awareness campaigns. And we really need to move countries towards having nationwide campaigns with government commitment and messaging to all relevant stakeholders. And that's why all of you are so vital in your countries at the regional and at the global level to spread the message on the importance of taking action on antimicrobial resistance. When we look at the Global Action Plan Objective 2 on AMR surveillance, this is actually where the majority of action has taken place over the last five years. And this also comes with increased interest, capacity building, and what is great is that it increases our evidence base to really inform policymaking. And so we have seen, and as you can see, most countries are in ND, is that most countries have a national AMR surveillance system and are collecting data nationally. So this is fantastic. When it comes to Global Action Plan Objective 3, an IPC on human health care, even despite, and we may see improvements in, in the reports next year, but even with the increased in attention to infection prevention control during COVID, we still see very little change actually at country level on implementing 
national infection prevention and control plans. And infection prevention, as been mentioned by many of the speakers, is one of the key aspects in preventing AMI happening in the first place. Basic hand hygiene, having running clean water and sanitation are incredibly vital in all healthcare facilities. So we still have a far way to go. When we look at gap objective four on optimizing the use of antimicrobials in human health specifically, and this is really where appropriate prescribing, behavior change of also of the consumers not to demand antibiotics when you don't need them or other antimicrobials, we also here have not seen a lot of change. A slight increase of countries that are in level C to E, which means that antimicrobial stewardship plans, treatment guidelines are being implemented in some healthcare facilities, but we really need the guidelines that also Liz Taylor mentioned to be based on local evidence and implemented at all levels of healthcare, because we often don't have the diagnostics to be able to provide data on appropriate prescribing. And so in summary, the, the data that Trax has shown us for the multi-year responses, there are some very strong and positive messages where countries have significantly, all countries reporting, moved from lower levels to higher levels from A and B to C and E. But there are also areas that have stayed rather stagnant where we really need to increase awareness and attention to. And so, as I had mentioned, National Action Plan development, it's been fantastic the number of countries that have now moved to developing their national action plans. However, we really still need to accelerate comprehensive implementation, importantly, financing, really looking at leveraging domestic financing to implement those plans and then, of course, to monitor. Having multi sectoral working groups at national and sub national level, we need to operationalize these groups. When it comes to national surveillance systems, it is great to have data, but we also need to ensure that we analyze the data. And what is important is also to look at the data that is coming from the bugs, the antimicrobial resistance data, together with the data on the use of antimicrobials to inform decision making. And then areas where there has been less movement and where we really need to have particular attention is on raising awareness and why this is very, very, very important this uh, World Antimicrobial Awareness Week, is we need to move countries towards nationwide government-supported antimicrobial awareness campaigns that target all key stakeholders, often with different messaging. Um, we need to establish systems to collect the use, how much are we actually using antimicrobials and which antimicrobials are we using? Because only then can we also change some of the prescribing behaviors. We need to implement infection prevention control national plans in all healthcare facilities. And finally, when it comes to optimizing the use, we need to adopt the AWARE classification that Liz Taylor also alluded to, access watching reserve classification of antibiotics into the national essential medicines list to guide prescribing, and we need to implement antimicrobial stewardship activities in all healthcare facilities. And with that, my final slide is just to mention that when looking at the implementation of national action plans, it is a continuous process, and we call this the six steps for sustainable implementation of national action plans. Strengthening governance, prioritizing activities based on evidence, and the resources available, costing the operational plan, identifying funding, resource mobilization where funding is still needed to sustainably implement the prioritized activities, and last but not least, to monitor and evaluate and to start the process again. And with that, thank you so much for your attention and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for your presentation, Dr. Pauline. We have a few questions for you. Uh, this is a question from Norul Islam Hasib, Special Correspondent, Bangladesh Post, uh, from uh, Dhaka. Uh, he wants to, that, uh, can you share any successful political actions taken by world leaders to control the spread of AMR, particularly in the context of global leaders group on antimicrobial uh, uh, resistance? And he says that because our country's prime minister is one of the co-chairs of that group. So 
any successful examples to share? Thank you. I think um, just the creation itself of the Global Leaders Group is already a success in its own right because it, it shows that there is global political commitment to antimicrobial resistance and we need to then distill this to countries perhaps where political commitment is still, is still lacking. So I think for me, two of the key pieces really is, is that awareness raising political commitment that is being accelerated through the work of the Global Leaders Group that is, is of course being co-chaired by Bangladesh and Barbados. Um, but I think the other and also very important piece that um, they are working on is also looking at sustainable financing actually of AMA because, and I didn't mention it specifically in the presentation, but when we look at national action plans, I mean, political leadership is one important aspect. The second important aspect is actually being able to implement because you have the resources and the financing to do so. But up until now, only 20% of our national action plans are fully costed and funded. And so there is a major gap that we still need to build in terms of being able to accelerate comprehensive um, implementation. And so one of that, and again, it's a key piece of the Global Leaders Group, is sustainable financing of AMR at all levels. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is another question from Maya Joshi, who's a Hindi correspondent from India. And she has sent this question to me in Hindi, and I'm just reading the translated version of it. Uh, that interagency coordination, even within health sector, is often a challenge. To stop AMR, we need so much interagency coordination with food systems, animal health, human health. Are we engaging different ministries, departments, and other stakeholders in designing and implementing national action plans? Or is AMR control going to be a vertical program? Very good question, and I will start with the very end. AMR should not be a vertical program, given that it is incredibly cross-cutting, as you had just mentioned. An action in AMR needs to be taken in various sectors, but also within the human health sector, in different national plans and policies and programs, and also funding. Um, there are elements of antimicrobial resistance response within primary health care response within the universal health coverage agenda within pandemic preparedness. And as you mentioned also, of course, within the One Health aspect, within food safety. And so I fully agree that um, intersectoral uh, coordination is incredibly vital, but also incredibly challenging. And what we really are trying to, to push, and we will have guidance coming out as well um, early next year, is the involvement of everybody from the beginning. And this is important when countries in particularly now have an opportunity in revising the national action plans, is to bring together all of the relevant sectors in what we say is that multi-sectoral working group. And that that working group links to existing other committees, such as if there is already a One Health Committee in place, if there is a committee on emergency preparedness, that there are linkages drawn, but also importantly, when, when talking about action within one sector, we also advise that then there are technical working groups, the ones who are actually the technical aspect, the implementers, I would say, that these, for example, a technical working group on antimicrobial stewardship or optimized use, that they include all of the different departments that are working on elements such as substandard and falsified medicines, the essential medicines list, antimicrobial stewardship programs in healthcare facilities, access and supply chain of antimicrobials. So they all need to be brought together at the table that we also see the interdependencies of interventions, do not duplicate because we don't have the resources to duplicate. We just don't have it. And that we also are able to implement comprehensively. So although it is not easy, it is vital to have intersectoral coordination that is effective and that actually people are meeting around the table on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we look forward to comments from Thomas. Thank you again, uh, and a very warm uh, thanks to Sarah for presenting that so beautifully. Um, and I think explaining the need for integrated national action plans. And I just wanted to highlight, you know, the opportunity that all of you as journalists have, which is during this wow week to contact the ministries, particularly Minister of Health, 
uh, a Ministry of uh, Livestock, Ministry of An uh, Agriculture, and ask questions about AMR. And they would be preparing themselves to celebrate this week. They will also have events. So, you know, covering the events in your own country uh, and getting interviews with the permanent secretaries or the ministers would really make a difference so that you can communicate what they are doing about AMR. And you can ask them questions about the five gap objectives and how are we in this country doing in terms of progress against those objectives? How far is our national action plan progressing? I think those would uh, help develop some kind of uh, interaction on AMR with the media and with people. So I really invite you to probe this uh, further with them. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, you had mentioned uh, about the funding and the shortage of funds, which was a very important point, Dr. Pauline, because there is a question from uh, Alice Tembe uh, from uh, Eswatini, and she says, uh, how far does WHO go in funding NGOs to increase community public awareness and education on AMR? And with limited resources, government health department is focusing on basic healthcare delivery and AMR is not really a priority for them. What can be done to bring it on top of agenda? Two questions. Thank you. Thank you. Two, two very important questions. But the first one in terms of financing, I mean, what we really are trying to advocate for is, is to leverage domestic financing as much as possible for all aspects of National Action Plan implementation, including awareness raising, because that is the only way that action will be sustainable and, and not solely donor driven. So I would, and my response there would be really to see where you can leverage domestic financing. When it comes to limited resources, I think this is the case in all countries and then you countries need to prioritize where action is taken. And my, my comment here would be is to raise awareness of your political leaders, as, as Thomas was just mentioning, on the importance of tackling antimicrobial resistance now, because if we lose effectiveness of our essential antimicrobials, basic infections will no longer be curable. And this will impact all of the, the advances in modern medicine, which goes then and impacts also basic healthcare delivery. So my, my comment would be here is really to raise awareness of, of the political leadership on the importance of tackling antimicrobial resistance, that we can continue to treat infectious diseases. And also, for example, continue to undertake cancer chemotherapy, because without effective antimicrobials, that also will become more and more challenging. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 